After 12 years as a chef in London, Giles Edwards was amazed at how local cuisine had evolved. One gap he did see was for his kind of cooking. So along with his brother James, he opened La Tete. In just months, it's made the top restaurants of 2017 on CNN. Nice is it's, it's kind of a philosophy, um, obviously utilizing the whole beast. For me, it's more about sustainability in restaurants going forward. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to come through in an animal. Uh, it can be the same with a vegetable, be the same with fish. It's about using things you know, to their full capacity. So yes, with the animal, we use the nose, we use the ears, and we use the tail and everything in between. But it's critical with the vegetables that it's seasonal vegetables. We're utilizing them as best as possible. We're not flying things around the world just to, just to put them on a menu. You mentioned you were inspired by Spanish, English and French cuisine. Why were these so influential? I think it's a cultural thing. Uh, the Italians, French and Spanish, they know how to use the whole animal um, and they pay its due. So I think here we just, we, we have that same philosophy, you know. Um, I get the carcass and I want to kind of pay it as much respect as I can. Uh, and so I cook everything. Um, I try and make it as approachable as possible to the diner. And I think uh, through a couple of subtle techniques, it, it, it's pretty effective. Your menu changes on a daily basis. What dictates it? It's the carcass, it's the vegetables, it's the fish. Uh, the menu changes twice a day. So if you can imagine, I get a whole lamb carcass in once a week. So for lunch, I'll really I'll run like a lamb chop, will be the, the lunchtime focus. And in the evening, I'll, I'll move on to the, the more prime cuts, so the, the legs and the shoulders. And so it's pretty much the carcass and, and what's available. Every day I get, a, I get a information from my fish supplier saying, this is what we've got, this is you know, how much we have of it. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's day-to-day availability um, that kind of builds the menu. For some perspective on this field of cooking, Jade was joined by food writers Nikki Werner and Brandon de Kock. What do you look for in order to give a good review? There are three things that I focus on. First, solid technique, then consistency, and lastly, to have a chef in a restaurant that's backed by a philosophy. A restaurant for me is a place that, that does something that you either kind of don't do at home or can't do at home, uh, or best still had never even thought of doing at home. So. If you can crack those uh, sort of metrics a little bit for me, that, that's when I start getting excited about a restaurant. Well, crispy pigtails, lamb brains, pig cheek. Now, I'm quite brave and the adrenaline junkie, but this menu does frighten me a little bit. Have you never had lamb brains before? Nope, can't say I have. I've been having them the whole time. <laughs> it's every, everyday fair, yeah. It's quite a challenging menu. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff on here that's, uh, that looks amazing. This is not the kind of thing you'd ever eat at home. Giles learned his philosophy from maestro of nose-to-tail cuisine, Fergus Henderson. It's an approach born of Europe's post-war culture of not wasting any of your ingredients. Super, here we have the ox heart. Uh, what I've done is it's been thinly sliced and then marinated in balsamic vinegar and olive oil. Then we just quickly grill that and it's paired with the raw grated beetroot. What's really nice is the kind of wholesome natural aspects of this dish. You've got the, this raw kind of earthy flavor of the beetroot and the ox heart. The great thing about ox heart is it doesn't have that, um, that awful texture that everyone is so scared about. It's just, uh, it really is it's just like steak. I'm smelling wonderful things coming from this direction. So what we've got here is a, a baked trotter. Um, but pretty much it's a, a pig's trotters that have been cooked for about six hours uh, with onions, garlic and thyme. And then we pick all the meat off and we start again with more bacon, onions, garlic, thyme, a bit of brandy uh, and a tiny bit of tomato blush. That will then just be baked in a ramekin with a couple of quail eggs on top. It's, uh, it's a theme of kind of like a shatshuka. Uh, it's the ultimate breakfast, it's, it's a fantastic lunch dish and, and it's a great starter. Honouring the produce we eat by using every possible part is what nature intended, but requires the chef to make these dishes palatable for a public not used to eating offcuts. You would never say that this is what we read on the menu, it looks amazing. What do you think of the presentation? Well, this dish uh, looks so comforting and delicious. I can't wait to dive in with a piece of bread and just mop it all up. It's basically bacon and eggs. It is. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate bacon the and eggs. The ultimate bacon and eggs. <laughs> and I think um, the ox heart's really interesting because I'm not really a big fan of beetroot. I don't really like blood fruit, is what I call it. Um, but I'm quite keen to see how that all pans out because that looks absolutely delicious. After meeting at a restaurant review, Nikki and Brandon's passion for food grew into a love for each other. They write cookbooks and make a fine team. Mm. Surprisingly, the trotter was a favorite for me. What was yours? 
surprisingly, you know, I don't like <laughs> bacon and eggs. I mean, what, what's not to love? That was, that was really, really delicious. A perfect example of what, why this restaurant's kind of challenging. So if you think you see pig's trotter on a, on a menu, you imagine you're going to get this foot on a plate. You know? But uh, what Giles is able to do is he's able to just do this ridiculous method, how he actually made, makes that. But I'm guessing it takes a really long time to get the flesh off the pig's trotter and then present it as like this most amazing bacon and egg dish. The deep flavour, you can really taste that, that Giles has built layers and layers upon flavour. That's a dish that's made with a lot of love and care and respect for the trotter. The ox heart was just like steak. How did you find it? I thought it was excellent. It just shows you how if you cut something thin um, versus thick, if you sear it versus poaching it, what a difference a technique can make to the ingredient itself. I'm very happy to pay someone to cook this kind of food for me because I know for a fact that it takes a lot of skill to clean an ox heart. Dessert is a sustainable affair too. The salted chocolate caramel tart uses fair trade cocoa and local chocolate, while the Madeleine baked honey cakes accompany a custard meringue dish which uses all of the egg. That uh, floating island to me is kind of, we've come all the way back to the beginning again because I can't think of a better expression of the nose to tail philosophy than that dish and it's, it's so simple, isn't it? Absolutely. You have the egg yolks in the custard or the creme anglaise and the egg whites in the poached meringue. So you basically have the nose to tail philosophy which has come full circle with dessert. It really was carried through each dish and it's been such a wonderful experience and I think I need to get the recipe for these. So good. Everything's carefully thought out and everything's just a little bit surprising and a little bit delightful. Um, for me that's kind of what this whole experience is all about. You know Giles calls it as it is on the menu but when you see the dishes they simply look like classical bistro dishes. They may sound challenging but they certainly aren't challenging to look at or to eat. An entire world of delicious ethical dishes await for those who dare to try them.